Bildung. What is Bildung? This is a question you might find yourself asking if you think, hey, I want to do something with Bildung. It's about education, consciousness. It's not building. Sometimes people think we're talking about the word building. It's not a building. Building is something else. It's about cultivating and shaping yourself. That sounds simple, but it's not. It's very philosophically rich. It's about self-cultivation and the philosophy and education that you have are linked that help you to mature in a cultural way. It's about the unification of selfhood. So it's about you self-cultivating, uh, reflecting on philosophy and education, and that you mature in a cultural way. So you've got insight into uh, cultural aspects and you become richer in the context of different culture and the elements of culture. That all comes together. It's unified in an identity that you develop and understand of yourself. It's about getting to grips with who you are. Can you look objectively uh, at your position in the world? How is your personal character developing? What's your learning route? How do you reflect and how does that connect together? So there's plenty of reflection uh, and contemplation, but also in the context of culture and society. Now you, there are many different tests you can do. For instance, you can do the jar of life. How much can you put in your life? Your wheel of life, is it round? Your code of arms, how do you envision yourself? There are different personality tests you can do, fill in about me or do an icky guy. Those are all wonderful ways to start the process, but they're really only scratching the surface. There are many questions you can ask yourself once you've filled in those types of diagnostic tests, such as what motivates you, what distracts you from what you're doing, what do you love, who adds to your life. And these are questions that you can use really at this first level of defining and understanding yourself. But you need to go deeper and building is where we go deeper. Um, those first questions you may be able to answer. You can ask yourselves, why does X motivate you? Why do you love doing what you do? Why do you have those values and beliefs? Where do they come from? We can look at the example of the iceberg model. Different levels of visibility about things you're aware of, which are at the top of the iceberg. Things you're not aware of that are out of conscious. So... There might be festivals, arts, dance, dress, literature. Those are elements that are visible at the top, easy to see, tangible, uh, that you can sort of uh, you know, come to contact with. But below that, there's a whole bunch of things that are not so visible. There are rules, norms, beliefs, perceptions, how you view the world, your attitudes, your values, your desires. And that is what building looks at. Not only identifying those, but also helping you to understand what they are, where they come from, and how they determine your position in the world. So this can help you by thinking about what choices do you make in life and why do you make them? And how authentic are your choices? Are they your choices or are they choices that you're doing because you think your parents want you to do them, or because a friend does them, or you saw a really cool feed? Where do your needs come from? How have you thought it out? What's the origin of these ideas? Do you really own them? Can you see where those ideas come from in a broader perspective? So to go below the surface, these are the questions you can ask. Where do your norms and values come from? Think of somebody who's had the most influence on you in your life. Why have they influenced you? How have they influenced you? What about some important conversations you had in your past? How did they affect you? And why did they affect you that way? When you make a choice, are you aware of the process of making a choice? And are you aware of why you make those certain choices? 
Then you can think about your comfort zone. What is your comfort zone? Are you aware when you're comfort and when you're stepping outside of your comfort zone? And why do those, uh, why do you choose to step outside of your comfort zone? You can also think of building uh, three levels. And this is not, these are how am I, not who am I, but how am I? How am I as a person? Your norms and your values. Secondly, I and the other. How are you in relation to other people? Coping with others, yourself as a system, in a system. And thirdly, uh, I and the world. So you and the world. How do you view the world from your perspective? And are you aware of how you're viewing the world from your perspective? An exercise you can do is think of a movie, a songbook, a painting, a place, something that's important to you. And then think the question, first of all, you know what you like about it, but then you can ask, why is this important to you? Uh, what kind of impact has it had on you? And why do you think it's had this impact on you? And finally, what can you learn about yourself from why it had this impact? So these questions are complicated and you can see we're getting a little bit deeper here. There's a um, another word, which is a building roman, which is a romance, a story about building. And there's lots of examples of this, books, movies, uh, in which an individual goes through uh, gr the process of growing up and they come of age, such as Tom Sawyer, uh, where you start with a young boy and you follow him, or the book Tom Jones, in which um, an individual goes through a whole series of progresses of learning about themselves. Wow, after that you probably need some space for thought. So we come back to the moment of reflection, have a chance to soak it all in. I would encourage you to explore building in more detail, to do research on it and to ask yourself some of these questions which will go much deeper than the questions you may have been asking yourself so far. And by doing so, you might arrive at a more peaceful and harmonious place.